This is lesson two, electricity two. And we're going to talk today about uh, basic electricity. And just going to uh, just the fundamentals very quickly since we have taken a electricity class already. Basic electricity starts out with the electron. And if we look at the electron, it has a nucleus. Inside the nucleus, there's a, uh, a neutron and there's possible would be a proton. And around that would be a electron, which is negative charge, and the neutron is neutral, and the proton would be positive charge. Now, the importance of understanding uh, the atom, we know it's the smallest particle that uh, in existence, but uh, what current flows through electricity is based on the electron moving through uh, conductors. And what makes a very good conductor is having only one or two electrons in this outer shell. The reason why that the, uh, the electron can break free and travel from one uh, atom to another atom. So things that only have one or two electrons in this shell outer shell has become a, a good conductor. If it have uh, five or six, it become a good insulator. So things that uh, you want to stop current flow would be an insulation or an insulator, and conductors would have only, like I say, one or two uh, electrons. Copper, silver, gold, aluminum uh, are very good conductors of electricity, and because it has only one or two electrons in its uh, outer valence shell. So no matter how many uh, orbits or how many it has, it based on that outer its outer valence shell, that outer one is where it makes it, like I say, a good conductor. So as we look at that current flow and looking at the atom, and we understand that current flows through different types of ways. This is magnetism. And we know that dissimilar poles will attract each other, but light poles will repel. So if I change that, I made this a south pole, and this is a north pole, they will push away from each other, and but when there's opposite poles, it will attract to each other. Another thing to keep in mind is that if we took a conductor or a wire and we put it between or within the magnetic field, the magnetic field is basically invisible lines of flux which the, uh, the magnet produces. We can't see it, but if we took uh, some paper and we took um, some iron filings and put it on top of the paper and the magnet underneath it, we'd be able to see the form of the, um, uh, the magnetic field around that because the, um, the metal filings would take position or take uh, around that magnetic field. But if we took a wire and we moved it through the magnetic field, the electrons will move in that wire. And if we control it somehow, we would be able to control the amount of current flowing through that wire. Now, if I wanted to increase that, I could take the same magnet, take the same wire, and put the wire in a coil and pass it through the magnetic field. I will increase the amount of current in that wire. The reason why I am multiplying the strength based on the number of turns of that uh, wire. So I could build a coil, a coil of wire, and pass it through the magnetic field, and I would be able to increase the 
amount of current flow through that instead of using one wire with one pass, I make a multiple pass through uh, the same magnetic field. Basically, that's how generators and alternators are designed, basically by putting a coil of wire, turning magnets around, and basically changing the, uh, the polarity and changing the, uh, the amount of current flowing through that at a certain rate. So depending on how fast that rotor is turning or the magnets are turning, it will determine how much uh, power we will produce. So there's many different types of uh, voltage we can look at. And we need to understand that it could be alternating current, which we call AC volts, or AC current. And also there's DC, direct current. And the difference in the two is AC use alternating current. And it's on a sine wave. Basically, by taking that same motor, starting at zero volts, going to peak voltage, going to zero again, peaking negatively. This is the negative. This is the positive. This is zero. And go back to zero again. So go to the peak positive, peak negative, and back to zero. That is one cycle. In the United States, there are 60 cycles per uh, minute. So in other words, per second, rather. So as it uh, flows, 60 times per second, this is changing polarity. And it's uh, producing an AC current. Now, of course, AC power is created by generators and alternators, which, uh, like I said, use magnets and coils or wires inside of that uh, device to produce electricity. Now, DC voltage, this is AC, but DC voltage is done a little differently. DC is a chemical reaction usually, using a battery. And we have two different charges, two pulse. We have a negative and we have a positive. And it will be a chemical reaction. This battery will be some type of chemicals in it, and it will have plates. Uh, of course, your car battery has lead plates in it, and it has an acid in the, uh, inside of it, surrounding the batteries, and it will produce uh, a, a voltage through the chemical reaction uh, of the electrons moving from plate to plate as there's a load between it. So if we put a light bulb between that, current will flow from negative to positive. So that's important to keep in mind because uh, current flows from negative to positive all the time. And this will be, like I say, DC current. DC, direct current. Other things we need to consider when we're looking at basic electricity is three basic elements of all circuits. You need to have a power source, you need to have conductors, and you need to have a load. Power source is the whatever the voltage is, AC power or DC power. The conductors is the wires which allow current to flow through it without consuming. The load is part of the system that have resistance that consume or it takes, it consumes the amount of power that's going through the uh, conductors from the power source. So give you an example of that. If I took a, a battery, went to a light bulb, came back out, the power source is here, the conductors going around, the load 
has some type of resistance, let's say um, three ohms of resistance, then it comes back. That would be a circuit. A circuit is anything that has a power source, has conductors, and it will have a load. And the load, anything that will consume energy. So that leads up to Ohm's law. Ohm's law is the relationship between voltage current and resistance. The relationship between these three and its own laws is stated differently. Voltage is stated as E. Current is stated as I. And resistance is stated as R. So if you look at Ohm's law, you put it into a formula. E, which is voltage, equals I, which is current, times R, which is resistance. E equals I times R. So if you want to state it differently, I equals E over R, and R, or resistance, equals E over I. Those are the three different formulas to determine Ohm's law, depending on what you are looking for. So, as we look at this, this is a way to determine how current flows through a circuit, determine what the voltage, determine what the resistance or the current in any circuit. So today, this is what we're going to discuss uh, about basic electricity.